2009, Star Trek was back. J.J. Abrams would be the first director of a Star Trek movie who hadn't actually known my father. And I had something very special I wanted to show him. Well, if you don't mind, it's something that's actually kind of fantastic. This is one of the main reasons why we want to interview you. I would have thought that having reached this point, it would be fun to go back to the years from which Kirk first got the Enterprise and met these people. I think what pleased me more than to have Star Trek come back years in the future and bright young people and new stars and so on really make it something and have them say, that's better than Roddenberry's. I'd like that. That's great. Yeah. Thanks. That's amazing. It is, huh? Yeah, well, well I certainly wouldn't say we did better than Roddenberry. It was uh, eerie to see him uh, talking about that. Well, you did an amazing job of keeping the core of Star Trek as well as bringing in a whole new oh, audience. Oh, thank you very much. And walking that line has been what everyone's tried to do. Now, when you do it, do you want to create your own idea and go the direction you want to? Well, here's the thing. Um, anyone who would say, you know, he's no Gene Roddenberry and, you know, J.J. Abe's, you know, got huge shoes to fill and he can't do what, what Gene did, uh, they're all right. It's just true. But that's okay. I mean, I don't want to be your father. I, I want to, you know, be whoever the hell I am and do my job. Ready for warp, sir. It's a weird thing, because as much as it's a gift, working on something called Star Trek, it's a huge burden, because you've got, you know, decades of pre-existing stuff to compare to. The great challenge and, and opportunity of doing Star Trek is, combining spectacle with intimacy and emotion. That's so scary. There's this amazing dynamic of these, these different characters. And sure, there are archetypes. You know, when you go to Bones, you know what you're gonna get. I'm a doctor, not an engineer. I'm a doctor, not a performer. Damn it, man, I'm a doctor, not a physicist. There's great wit sort of built in, and it's the reason that you can recast the roles, because it's not just that there were terrific actors playing these parts, but they were great parts to play. Now, we would had heard that you weren't initially a fan of Star Trek. I appreciated the show. I just was not, you know, an avid fan. I was not one of the friends of mine who were just, you know, obsessed. Yeah. You know, the Trekkies are the people who, they get it in that way. But now I'm one of those people who gets it. That's awesome. There's a small similarity in, in the sense that I, I didn't really watch Star Trek as a kid. It was only after my father passed away. Isn't that, that weird? To explore it, now it feels yeah. like part of me. I would, of course, you assume, if your last name's Roddenberry, that you're a Trekkie. And my guess is that you might have been had your name not been Roddenberry. It's a fascinating thing, the relationship between fathers and sons. Everyone has that baggage, and everyone has to figure out their place.